Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about everything long runs. So long runs, as the name suggests, are when you head out the door and go for a run that goes to the upper limit of your mileage range. The weekly long run is a core part of most training plans, especially half marathon, marathon, and ultra marathon training plans. So whether you're training for a race or just fancy heading out for a long running session, it's worth knowing a little bit more about long runs. In this video, we're gonna go through the reasons for doing long runs and the benefits of long runs, the big mistakes people make when they do their long runs, how far and how fast you should be running your long runs, what you should take with you on your long runs, how to fuel your long runs, and then at the end, I'll give you a couple of alternative ways to do your long runs. Guys, if you're new to my videos, feel free to hit the subscribe button below and then tap the bell icon. That way you'll support the channel and you'll also get a heads up whenever I upload a new video. So let's get into it. Long runs are the longest training run in a typical weekly training schedule and are really all about building your stamina or aerobic endurance. What exactly is happening to your body during long run training? You're building denser capillary networks to deliver oxygenated blood to your muscles. You're improving muscular strength. You're gonna enhance your running economy, which is essentially your miles per gallon you get as a runner. You're also building denser mitochondria, which are the cells which convert stored energy into energy you're using to power your runs. You're also developing mental toughness and getting used to running for hours on end, which is great preparation for race day. You can almost think of long runs as a race day dress rehearsal, where you can test out gear and strategies for the big day itself. In short, long runs are all about training your body to run for longer. In a marathon training plan, for example, the long runs get progressively longer most weeks. This is increasing the upper limits of your endurance in a structured way to minimize the risk of overtraining or injury. It's the biggest mistake that many runners make in their long runs is that they simply run too fast. For most of us, we should be doing our regular long runs at a slow, comfortable, conversational pace. Think about two to three out of 10 in terms of rate of perceived exertion. Why do we want to run slow? Remember, long runs are all about improving your endurance. For that reason, we're mainly interested in the time you spend on your feet. It's why we usually measure our long runs based on distance or time and not on pace. What happens if you try and do your long runs fast? Essentially, in a hard or fast long run, you're attempting to combine both endurance and speed and train both of these at the same time. Although this might seem like a good idea, the truth is you're probably gonna be overdoing it. By trying to train for both speed and endurance at the same time, you're probably serving neither effectively. Your performance is likely gonna be compromised. It's better to separate both of these out and train for speed during the week and your regular runs and train for endurance on your long runs at the weekends. A second reason for avoiding faster long runs is that you're gonna end up tired, drained, and perhaps even injured, which can take days or weeks to recover from. This is especially important when you're in the middle of a marathon training plan, for example, when you're training five or six times a week. The last thing you want to do is overtrain on a hard or fast long run and then spend days or weeks recuperating. It's gonna derail your entire training plan. But if you think that only doing slow, easy long runs is boring, and perhaps you're worried that it isn't sufficiently preparing you for race day, stick around till the end of this video where I share a couple of long run alternatives. So how to run your long runs. Most runners find it easier to do their long runs at the weekend and usually in the mornings. This is simply because that's when they've got enough time to disappear for a few hours and go running. When you start your long run, you really don't need to do any kind of specific warm up. Since you're running slowly anyway, you can just ease yourself in a comfortable conversational rhythm. In terms of long run pace, as we've mentioned, you just wanna find a relaxed conversational pace, which you feel like you could sit at comfortably for a long time, as I said, around two to three out of 10 in terms of effort. Your long run route doesn't actually matter too much either in terms of terrain or gradients. Given that you're not running at a set pace, feel free to mix it up and hit the trails or go exploring. Long runs are actually a good opportunity to find new places to run and get out of your regular routine. Just remember to map out your route before you start. The last thing you wanna do is get lost or run too far or not run far enough. When you're mapping out your route, you also wanna note any potential pit stops, whether it's to get some water, buy some snacks, or go to the bathroom. Long runs, by their nature, take a while. Some runners love spending hours on the trails while others get a little bit bored. 
For this reason, it's worth planning out some podcasts, audiobooks, or some music to listen to as you're running, or even better, go running with a friend. So what to take with you? On my long runs, I usually take a lightweight running pack so I can carry a few things. Here's what I take. I take my phone and some headphones so I can listen to podcasts or some music. It also means I'm contactable if need be. I also take my house keys, obviously, and some cash. I take a water reservoir so I can stay hydrated if I'm going out for more than an hour. Likewise, I'll start to take some gels with me if I'm going out for a run of more than an hour. Which brings me on to the next subject, which is fueling your long runs. Long runs need fuel. And in general, the primary source of long run fuel is carbohydrates. While it's true that low intensity exercise will burn some fat for fuel, unless you've been on some special fat adaptation regime, your body is still gonna be relying on carbs to fuel your long run. That's why it's sensible to have a hearty carb rich meal before your long run. Ideally, you wanna have those carbs one to two hours before your run. Think of a small meal. Although this can be a challenge if you're doing your long run first thing in the morning, it's better to fuel up than go running on an empty stomach. Think about things like porridge oats, bananas on toast, smoothies, these kind of things work well for breakfast. And once your long runs get to over an hour in length, you wanna start thinking about fueling while you run. The easiest way to do this is with energy gels. These are syrupy packs designed to give athletes a fast energy boost. Aim to take one of these around once every hour of exercise or whatever the instructions say. If energy gels aren't your thing, you can find more natural or whole foods based snacks like trail mixes or natural energy bars to help power your long runs. How far should your long runs be? Well, it really depends on your past running experience and whether or not you're training for a specific event. In general, the 10% rule is a decent rule of thumb to follow when planning your long runs. That is, week on week, don't increase your overall mileage by more than 10%. This is essentially a rule of thumb that prevents you from overstretching yourself and getting burned out or injured. If you're training for a half marathon, a generally accepted longest long run distance is around the 11 mile mark. It's enough to train your endurance for the rigors of race day, and it's also gonna give you that confidence you need that you'll be able to complete 13.1 miles when it comes to your half marathon. You will find that experienced runners will often run significantly further than 13.1 miles in their training long runs for, for a half marathon. For marathons, the golden number is around 20 to 22 miles. Anything much more than that, and you're increasing your risk of injury or overtraining without much added benefit. So step back weeks are when your long run distance is a little less than the previous week. You'll find these on all my training plans. The idea is that every three to four weeks, you want to have a training week where your overall mileage doesn't actually increase. This helps the body consolidate the gains it's made in the previous training cycle and reduces the risk of overtraining. Okay guys, so earlier in the video, I mentioned alternatives to the long run. I mentioned that some runners might find doing constant, long, slow runs a little bit too easy or just boring. So here are two ways to mix up your weekly long run. One is fast finish long runs. A fast finish long run is one in which you increase your pace for the last 30% or so of your long run. So let's say you're doing a 10 mile long run. You'll do the first seven miles at a nice, easy, relaxed pace like any other long run, and then you'll increase the pace somewhat for the last three miles. This doesn't need to be a dramatic increase in pace. Instead, think about increasing your effort level by 10 to 20%. In other words, increase that rate of perceived exertion from a two or three out of 10 to a four or five. This way, you're gonna train your body to run at a higher intensity on tired legs. Number two is to do an actual race. So another alternative to a long, slow run is to run an actual race. So let's say you're training for a half marathon, you could go out and run a 10K. If you're training for a marathon, you could go out and run a local half marathon and run it at your target race pace. Guys, for a bit more on how to incorporate a smaller race into training for a larger race, check out my article on tune-up races, I'll put a link below. And guys, that's it for long runs. As usual, if you've got any questions, hit me up below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.